Hello, Stitchy people. How are you today? It is July 22nd. It is Wednesday, and uh, this weekend is 24 hours cross stitch. So that's why you're hearing from me a little bit sooner than usual. More about that in a minute. Uh, but I did want to talk about, <laughs> before I go any further, I'm Jesse. This is Miss Lay Pages. It's after work, and my brain is fried. <laughs> Uh, this is floss tube number 18, did I say that? Anyway, welcome, it's good to have you, I hope you're well, and um, yeah, I wanted to go over the regular floss tube stuff in addition to giving you an overview of my plans and my strategy for 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, it's going to be a little bit less crazy this time than it was last time, at least in some respects, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So first, uh, let's get right into it. I have some happy mail. Uh, my Zenspire designs for this month came, so I have my uh, my my two big stickers and my one little sticker from the Sticker Club, uh, which is awesome. And as a side note, I have a new camera, which has an autofocus feature, which is super awesome. Um, but I have noticed that sometimes if I move too much, the autofocus goes a little crazy. So I'm gonna try not to <laughs> I'm gonna try not to get crazy with it, so I don't make you motion sick. <laughs> It's all a learning experience. Um, and you may notice too, the stuff behind me is, well, it's probably just as messy as it ever is. But um, but yeah, this is the state of things right now. I keep trying to organize and keep it clean for videos, but honestly, until I get everything into the craft room, it's, it is what it is. It's life. Life is messy. <laughs> so let's get right to it. So um, we have we have our stickers. I'll go with, I'll do the big ones first. So. Uh, Britta Thompson is uh, the owner and artist behind uh, Zenspire Designs. Come off camera. I know you can do it. There we go. Um, so this is a peach, which is super, super awesome. And I just recently, just got re recently discovered that she does wholesale orders. So my plan is to, um, to check and see how that works and perhaps get a bunch of stickers that I could share with you. So here's the second sticker travel more if I can get it to focus come on you can do it you can there we go I'm talking to it like it's a child that needs encouragement um, so yeah so I'm hoping to be able to do that to be able to share stickers with you all in the future and the way I would do that is through happy mail that I would send out to you let's see if I can get the camera to focus I need my face to be there we go it's a cute little American flag. So yeah, these are awesome. Um, the way I would do that is through uh, my own happy mail and I now have a happy mail form that you can find in the description down below. Um, and happy mail is just so that you can give me your email address, your uh, mailing address, your name, so that I could send you fun stuff like this. If I have stickers that I want to share, if uh, I would like to send you a, a postcard or a greeting card, maybe I'll send out holiday cards this year, who knows. Um, and also, um, if you ever enter for thank you gifts or for uh, past the stash or anything like that if I end up doing live sales or something like that all of that would be a reason that you would fill out the happy mail form so that I have your contact information and your mailing address so I can send you things so if you want things from me fill out the happy mail form easy as that awesome um, also you may have already noticed in the description that I've started using a link haven instead of having all the different links and trying to remember what I talked about and what you might still want to know from a past video and all that sort of stuff I now have a link haven so you can just click on that one link it takes you document to a document that's all sectioned out and has everything I've ever talked about so all the whips I've worked on this year whips I came into 2019 with um, stuff that I've started tools that I use designers that I love youtubers that that I talk about all that stuff it's all on the link haven so definitely check that out so that is happy mail I hope to send you all happy mail in the future um, so definitely hit that form if that's something you're interested in getting and I promise I won't send you anything weird <laughs> not unless you ask for it <laughs> so um, I have worked on a couple of things obviously it hasn't been as long so I haven't worked on as much um, and I broke my thing I, I broke what I said about not starting anything new so I have two new starts <laughs> but in my defense they were really fast or faster than most of the other things that I've worked on so <laughs> 
I'm still at about the same stage with my model stitch, uh, the super secret model stitch. Um, I am almost, or I'm just over a quarter of the way finished with the full pattern. So it's large, it's one, it's uh, 168 stitches by 168 stitches. And I've now finished uh, about the, the top left quarter of it. Um, so that's pretty exciting, but uh, that's it's probably gonna have to wait until next week um, because this weekend is 24 hours cross stitch. But first, let's talk about new things. So uh, as you all know, this, this um, channel is not meant for children under the age of 13. So if you are under 13, you need to switch off or go look at something else or something because we have a language warning coming up. <laughs> So this pattern is kind of awesome. So I'm in a couple of different cross-stitching Facebook groups. Uh, you may be in them too. You may not have heard about them. One of them is called uh, Cross-Stitch Club for Non-Assholes, uh, which is pretty fun, and also uh, Snarky and Nerdy Cross-Stitching. So I can't remember which group um, I saw the call for, uh, or saw the call go out in. Um, one or the other of them, uh, a woman named, um, or a person named Effie Nazaro of Keiko's Barn on Etsy uh, had a pattern that they were looking to have stitched so that they could get some model pictures to put on their Etsy listing. And I really liked the pattern and so I double checked to make sure that they didn't need it immediately, like that there was um, some amount of time where I could get it done and, um, you know, to find out whether they needed the, the finished product sent to them and all that sort of stuff. So I got the details. Um, there was plenty of time to stitch it and I felt like it was going to be a quick stitch and I could do it on pretty much any fabric I wanted, any threads I wanted, any way I wanted to end. They just needed pictures when I was done. So I was like, sure, I'm in. Um, and here is the result. Bam! Let me see if I can get it to focus. Focus. Okay, we're focused. So, uh, as I said, language warning. Um, so I'm not going to actually say it out loud, but you can read it. Um, I am the effing supreme. Uh, it's pretty awesome, I think. So, <laughs> so this fabric is a piece of um, 32 count, probably Lugana, um, that I got from a grab bag from Dying for Cross Stitch, Kathy Davidson. It's one that I've been saving for a while because I love, I love, love, love the color. So it's purple with all this fantastic modeling, and probably you saw it in my very first stash flash. flash. So it's a great piece of fabric, and I felt like this purple was gonna be perfect because it's sort of like smoky and ethereal. Okay, focus, focus. It's having some issues. It's sort of smoky and ethereal, and then this floss is actually, um, this is silk floss from um, Brandy at Be Stitch Me, and I think I just showed this floss in my last floss tube video, so this is really, really recent. This is the Evil Queen colorway, um, and I think it turned out really, really awesome. So, uh, as you can see, I still need to iron it, so I haven't sent the official pictures to Effie yet. Uh, I will be doing that sometime between now and early next week, so I need to iron it and, um, and uh, take some really nice pictures, and uh, then they will do what they need to do with the pictures. It'll be awesome. So um, that was really, really fun. It was a quick stitch. I started that last Tuesday and finished it on Saturday. Um, so yeah, super, super fun. Really excited about that. And then I decided, since I was starting something small, I'd start two something smalls. Why not? <laughs> this is one I've been needing to do for a while, and I was going to put it off, um, but the... the um, the person it is technically for is now in the world and is no longer in the womb, so I decided to go ahead and get it started. Um, so this, and um, I'll stick a picture up here as well. Focus, focus. So um, this is ultimately going to say "Welcome, Tiny Overlord," and then at the bottom I'm going to stitch the uh, the baby's name which I won't share the baby's name on floss tube uh, for privacy reasons. Um, but ultimately it will, it will have the baby's name at the bottom and uh, the birth date. So that will be super, super cute. In addition to having uh, the lettering, um, welcome and then tiny overlord, it'll have uh, borders in between. And I think it calls for back stitching around the letters as well. So I have some really gorgeous silk from hand dyed by Rolanda um, left over from the be well and stitch Hamsa that 
um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy did. Um, I think that sort of teal turquoisey blue um, I think would really accent this well so that may be what I do. I may use that for the the border in between and then the the um, back stitching as well. So um, obviously I still have a ways to go. Um, at the moment we have tiny over L as my husband likes to say. So I got the ORD down here and I got the whole welcome and the border and all the back stitching. So um, was hoping to get this done before 24 hours of cross stitch but I'm not really sure. Um, that's only tonight and tomorrow. Um, and it's taking me long enough with these letters that I, I don't think I will get there. I might get all the lettering done, but I won't get it finished, I don't think, before before Friday. And once Friday morning hits, um, it is 24 hours cross stitch and nothing but until the end of the weekend. So, but that's what I've been working on. Um, and yeah, so I had talked about having this plan to, to do uh, some work on my stitch alongs. Um, you know, one a week for the end of the month, blah, blah, blah. That didn't happen. Um, I haven't worked on that at all because I've worked on these instead. So, um, but my 24 hours of cross stitch will be focused primarily on um, my stitch alongs for 2020. So, um, let's do a stash flash and then we will talk about 24 hours of cross stitch. And then probably after that, we will do a little bit of a drawing for those bendy flips that I talked about last class too. Um, I had I thought about waiting until after 24 hours of cross stitch to do the drawing, but um, I think I did say in my last video that I would announce the folks that would get those in my next floss tube, and this is the next floss tube. So um, what I'm going to do is I will I will insert a thing where I draw the the names and stuff um, but um, but yeah we'll do that we'll do that later <laughs> so um, I, like I said I don't have a ton of I don't have a ton of stash flash um, I have a whole lot of things actually most of the things I have coming are actually advents that won't be here for um, for at least a couple months so um, I will go ahead and mention those now though so I have signed up for both knitty and stitchy advents for um, October and for Christmas time, December time. So um, the knitty ones I'll talk about in, uh, in my next knitting podcast, but I did sign up for the um, Black Needle Society 13 Days of Halloween box. Um, so that will come out, uh, I think those are due to ship at the beginning of October so that you have them um, to, to open them on the 13 days leading up to Halloween. Um, I think that's how that's scheduled. Um, so I've got that coming. That's really exciting. I know that at least one of the items in it is going to be an exclusive color from Kathy Davidson Dying for Cross Stitch. So that is super awesome. I think there's going to be fabric and a pattern and all kinds of fun stuff in there too. So can't wait to show that to you. So that's coming. And then for Christmas, for holiday time, um, Black, the Black Needle Society also did a uh, 12 and 24 days of cross stitch uh, box. So I was, I bought, I originally bought the 12 days box um, because the 24 days was sold out, but then I got an email and they were like, actually we had, our, we had an inventory issue. We actually do have 24 day boxes, which you like to upgrade. Yes, please. <laughs> so I have really, really fun Christmas stuff coming for cross stitching. Um, and then I have a bunch of advents coming for knitting too. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> um, so let's see. Right now I have a few pieces of fabric and I have uh, one skein of silk to show you. So this, um, the silk is from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. Um, so this is another, a new colorway called Stardust. It's really pretty. So her silks are really interesting because they um, they feel different than some of the other silks that I've worked with. Uh, Rolanda's and Dinky Dye's um, are both actually a little bit smoother than this. This has a little bit more drag I've found when I'm using it um, in fabric and it might be because I'm using Lugana which is a pretty tight weave. Um, so you might want to use these on linen or maybe even use um, a thread conditioner to make sure that those threads aren't dragging too much but the colors are fantastic. As you saw in Evil Queen, like this stitches up super nice. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna work. So again, that's Stardust. 
And then I also have Brandy's uh, Fabric of the Month. So fair warning, this is the brand new Fabric of the Month. I just got it like a day or two ago. She just shipped it on the 15th. So if you haven't gotten yours yet and you don't want to be spoiled, then like skip forward um, because I don't, I don't want to mess up your uh, your surprise. But these are these are pretty recent. So let's start with the Neutral Club. And I apologize, there's going to be some rattling. So this is the Neutral Club, and I get mine on uh, linen, 32 count linen. And I'm not sure what the color is. Usually she names them, but this one doesn't have a color written on the thing. So, pink. It's a pretty pink. I'm trying to look at it through the, I don't know why I'm trying to look at it through the fabric. <laughs> trying to get it to focus and I can't tell if it's focusing okay that's sort of sort of focusing okay it doesn't know what to do we'll we'll just we'll do the best we can so it's pink um and this like blue edge really throws me off I find okay you can focus focus okay um the blue edge throws me off a little bit I don't know it messes with my ability to see the color but it's really nice. It's kind of a baby pink. But it's, um, it also edges slightly into like a brickish red, which is interesting to me. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna, I'm not sure what I would stitch on this. Um, but it'll be something interesting. So that is the neutral um, that I get in linen. I actually think I might switch to getting both of my, um, both the neutral and the standard in Jobelin, just because I'm in love with Jobelin and I need Jobelin for everything. So we'll see. Um, so this next piece is the standard. And again, rambling, I apologize. This is the standard club uh, in 32 count Jobelin. This is an 18 by 34 piece, which is a nice generous cut. Oops, let me open it up for you. Look, 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 look. Oh, I love this color. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's so pretty. And I like how it's darker in one corner. So over here, we've got more dark on the on my right side. I don't know if that's your right or left. <laughs> This, nope, oh. <laughs> this corner. <laughs> I, oh, it's this corner. Okay, directionally challenged, y'all. I apologize. This, it's my left hand actually in the bottom corner. <laughs> okay, pardon me. Again, it's the end of my work day. Um, yeah, I usually do these in the morning, so that I'm a little bit more alert, but uh, not today apparently. Um, so this is really cool. It's kind of um. It's not coming off as green as it actually is. Um, so it's sort of um, a minty green base. And then it's got this dark blue slash purple all through it, which gives it sort of an undersea feel to me. Um, or even possibly a Halloween vibe. That'll be interesting. So what I might do, I have a Halloween pattern. Um, I think it's like Abracadabra sampler or something like that, Halloween sampler. Uh, that I got from Brandy. I'm gonna, I might take that sampler and put it against this fabric and see if I like the combination, um, if I might want to use that fabric for that. I think that'd be cool. Otherwise, some kind of witchy something I think would be good. Like that's given me, it's given me witchy vibes. We'll see. Uh, but I love that color. It's beautiful. It's really original and different, I think. So I'm very, very happy with that. Um, and then the last set, of, I have three more fabrics um, that I got from Rolanda, hand dyed by Rolanda. Um, I now have her schedule sort of down pat, so I'm spending too much money. But um, it's fantastic, because even though she's in Canada, she, sip, she ships incredibly quickly. So I ordered these uh, the end of last week, like Thursday or Friday. They arrived Monday from Canada. <laughs> I can't get stuff from Richmond, <laughs> which is 30 minutes away. I can't get stuff from Richmond in that quickly. 
So yeah, I was super impressed. So let me show you um, what I got. Hold on, rattling. Okay. So um, let me show you. Let me show you this piece first. So these are all Joblin, because uh, y'all know. I think they're all Joblin. Because y'all know I'm a Joblin fiend. So this is a 16 and a half by 25, which is an interesting cut. Um, slightly less than um, a fat quarter, I think. Uh, but it's a 32 count Joblin. It's a really pretty color. And it's coming off strangely on camera. So it looks more blue on camera. I don't know what it is about my lighting or something. Everything's coming out more blue. So uh, it looks a little bit like... Um, on camera, anyway, it looks a little bit like Brandy's um, Earth colorway, but really, uh, in real life, it's greens and browns more than it is blue. It's got a little bit of blue in it, but not nearly as much as is coming off on camera. Um, but I really like it. It's got this like Earth tone vibe, um, but it's really subtle. So it's sort of a neutral, but it's got the blues and the greens in it to kind of give it some oomph. So, really, really like it. That really caught me when I saw it. Especially because I don't have, um, I get a lot of purple. <laughs> I don't get a ton of, like, blue and green and brown. I get a lot of purple because that's what I'm drawn to primarily. I love, purple's my favorite color. And purple is, like, a way of life. It's not just a color. <laughs> so, purple everything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, um, I saw that and I was like, that would be, that would be interesting to have. So I got that. I also got this really gorgeous fabric. Um, it was actually, um, and this is a Lugana. So this was actually, um, a little darker. Both of these other two pieces, I think, were a little bit darker and richer on the computer screen than they are in real life. Um, but it's still a really gorgeous neutral fabric. So, um, here is this one. So this is um, maybe lighter, I think, than Brandy's Coffee Club. It's somewhat similar to her uh, Toast colorway, if you're familiar with that. It's a creamy brown, um, like a really, really light coffee. Like if you like lots of cream in your coffee, um, a Cafe au lait kind of color maybe, um, vanilla latte kind of color. It's really nice. Really nice. It's not coming off. The colors in my camera are still really funky. And this autofocus is uh, maybe not quite as good as I had hoped. <laughs> we'll see. Um, last but not least, this is a new fabric for me. Oh, so this was a 32 count Lugana. Um, and it's interesting. Okay, so I had one of you ask. Um, what the difference is between Lugana and Joblin. So you can't tell, I don't think, um, just by looking through the camera, but um, the, the main difference between the two types of fabric is what the cotton is mixed with. So both of these are a cotton blend. Um, your Ada's and your linens are 100%. So Ada's 100% cotton, linen is 100% linen. Um, so they're one fiber straight up, but your, your even weaves are mixed fibers. Um, so they're blends and your Lugana's and this is Lugana's I believe it's 51 or 52 percent cotton and then the rest of it is um, viscose um, so that's the fiber that this that the cotton's mixed with for uh, Lugana and then uh, Jobelin is I think a slightly lower cotton content maybe 50 or 51 percent and then the rest of it is rayon um, a rayon or um, modal. So what happens um, is that for the Jobelin, you get a smoother fabric overall that has maybe a little bit of a sheen, depending. Um, and your Lugana is um, is a bit rougher feeling. It's not as smooth to the touch. And now the focus is not working at all. There we go. Um, so your Lugana is going to feel 
uh, more tactile to you. It's not going to have that smooth finish that the Jobelin does. And I think that's the reason that I like Jobelin so much. So Jobelin's a little bit stiffer, um, especially when you put it in a hoop or you put it on your Q-snap. It's going to seem a little stiffer in general. It's not as stiff as Ada right out of the package, but it's got a little bit more um, just like it holds its shape a little bit better. Um, Lugana is closer to linen as far as how it holds its shape and that sort of thing, but you get a smoother, more even feel with Jobelin and slightly less smooth, um, but still um, more even than linen with Lugana. So, um, so that's that. That's that little lesson for you today. But this other fabric I have um, is a completely different fabric than I have ever worked with before. And when I was chatting with um, Rachel and Heike, Rachel Ray Craft and Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, um, I sort of called this, once I found out what it was, I called it sort of the marriage of, um, of Lugana and linen, or even weave and linen. So this is called Quaker Cloth, um, and this is a 28 count fabric that I have here. And Quaker Cloth is actually technically a linen, um, but it is a linen that is more like even weave. So, um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you on this camera because I don't think it'll focus well enough. But let me just show you the color. Oh, and that's interesting. The inside has some slight imperfections. Hmm. That won't be terribly noticeable once I, um, I don't know if you'll even see it on the camera. So it's a really rich brown, um, which is, of course, not going to come off on the camera. It looks more like a brick red on camera. Um, but this is an interesting fabric. So, and I don't, you can't really see the imperfections either. Well, that's good to know. I won't point them out if you can't see them. Anyway, um, so this is Quaker cloth. It's a really pretty brown. The brown is what got me because I feel like this is the color that I want to use for um, that Barbara Anna Designs um, pattern light, um, the fox in a dress cell. <laughs> so that's what I want to use for, this is what I want to use for that. I just really like this brown. Um, it's really nice. Focus. Why won't you focus? I don't know what it's trying to, there we go. I don't know what it's trying to focus on, but it's not working real well. Um, yeah. So, um, and I'm, I will try to hold it up, but I don't know that you're going to be able to see. So the interesting thing about this is that the, the individual fibers, the individual threads, are spaced out much more evenly like an even weave, but you can see that they're um, are not spaced out. The thicknesses are more um, uniform like even weave, but you can still tell that it's more like a linen because you can see the slubs and things. So let me see if I can get it to focus for you. Oh. There we go. So you might be able to see, maybe if I hold up a, well, I had it focused, there we go. So you might be able to see that some of those threads are actually thicker than other threads. So that's uh, one of your signatures of linen is that you have those thicker and thinner threads. You sometimes have slubs, which are those big hunky pieces randomly out of nowhere. Um, but even though you see those thinner and thicker threads, you can see that this is a more even overall um, crisscross than on a linen. So let me show you. So this is straight up linen. And see how there's more variation with the individual threads? That, in, that variation with the threads is what throws me off when I'm counting, which is why I like even weave so much better. So then compare that to this piece of Jobelin. See how there's almost no variation in the various threads that are going up and down and sideways. They're all pretty much exactly the same. So that's what I love about even weave. And then here's the Lugana, just so you can compare. If I can get it to focus. Oh, there we go. Well, it did focus, and then it moved. There we go. So the Lugana, you can see there's more space. It's a little rougher looking. All that kind of stuff. So, a little bit of fabric comparison for you. So this Quaker, this Quaker, what did I call it? Quaker cloth um, is really interesting to me because I think it's going to be um, easier to stitch on because the um, 
the threads look much more uniform and I feel like I can count this better. Um, but we'll see once I'm working on it. Um, I do really love this color. So I need to do a floss toss with the uh, fox in a dress colors. Um, I feel like that foxy orangey red is going to pop, but we'll see. We'll see. I keep buying different colors because I'm just, for whatever, like, whatever I buy, nothing has really screamed, yes, I am the right fabric. So hopefully this is the right fabric and, you know, that'll be that. So, okay. So that's all the haul. Um, like I said, there's not, there's not a ton, um, because we just haven't had time for it to accumulate. There will be more. There's always more. Um, I did buy some more, um, I bought some, the new floss re-dyes from Kathy. Um, so those will be here whenever she finishes dyeing. I think she, she takes the orders and then spends a week or two dyeing and then sends them out. So probably next week or the week after, um, I'll have those cotton re-dyes. I did not get her fabric of the month. Um, it was a nice color. It just wasn't a color. Focus. Focus. Okay. Um, it just wasn't a color that I thought I would use. Um, it's because um, she's doing like a, or yeah, she's doing sort of a bright magenta pink. Um, it was a nice color. And if I, if I could have thought of anything or any theme that I wanted to stitch on that, I would have gone ahead and gotten a piece. Um, but it just, I just couldn't, I couldn't justify it. I have a pink, um, a piece of pink Ada that's a very similar color and I still have no idea what I'm going to stitch on that. So I thought probably no need to get a second piece of bright pink. So as, as lovely as it was. So that is all the haul. So now let's talk about 24 hours cross stitch. So this will be my second time officially participating in 24 hours of cross stitch and I am like, I'm full focus, full bore on this 24 hours of cross stitch ride this time. <laughs> so um, I know last time part of my frustration was that I felt like I lost today because I had to work that Friday and I only had Saturday and Sunday and then I wasn't feeling well going into Sunday and so I really didn't get in nearly as many hours as I had hoped. Um, the weekend was just kind of wonky from the get-go. I woke up way too early on Friday and my energy level just never, um, it never really got back to normal after that. So this time what I'm going to do is I have actually already cleared to take off Friday. Um, so I will be off of work Friday. I will be um, doing nothing but stitching Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And as it turns out, my husband is working day shift. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so I will have the daytime hours, the stitching and prime stitching hours all to myself. I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> Not that I can't when he's here, it's just, you know, I mean, your partner wants to spend time with you, so <laughs> silly people want to, like, actually see you and hang out with you and do stuff, like, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so he will be off doing work things, so I can be here doing cross stitch things, which is going to be awesome. So um, theoretically, I'm going to try to do eight hours um, a day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll see how that goes. Eight hours of stitching is a lot of stitching. Um, any of you who do marathon stitching, yeah, you, you get it. It's, it's a lot, a lot of stitching. Um, so if I get tired, then I will take breaks. If I don't get eight hours, I don't get eight hours. Ultimately, at the end of the weekend, if I don't get 24 hours, that will be okay. Um, it won't be what I want. <laughs> um, I would like to hit the goal, but I'm not going to kill myself to do it because it's meant to be enjoyable. It's meant to be a fun challenge. It's not meant to, to, you know, kill yourself and get stressed and freak out and all that kind of stuff. So, but I do have a plan. Um, I have a plan. So I'm using several tools. Um, and I think I mentioned this before. So I have six stitch alongs, um, Sal's that I, uh, or technically I have seven for 2020, but I have six that I'm actually still committed to. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I have six that I committed to. So 24 hours divided by six is four hours a piece. So that is my goal is to work on each one for at least four hours. Um, I thought about having a goal of trying to finish at least one month's um, pattern or something like that. Um, that I think is too stressful because I'm not necessarily a fast stitcher. Um, so that could actually make me feel worse if I don't finish a full month um, in, in the time that I have. So, um, so what I've decided is to put four hours in on each. And then if I finish the four hours on all six of them and I want to go back to one, then that's totally fine. Um, but that's my goal. So. Um, and I actually, let's see, so I have, 
I have my tracker here to help me. And this, um, I believe I found this in the files on, um, it's not focusing, focus, come on now. Is that better? Okay. So I believe I found this in the, um, the files on the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Facebook group. Um, it is a sheet that was made by Stitch All the Things. So if I didn't find it in files, I found it in a link in the files, I think. Um, and this is just a stitch along tracker. So um, as you can see, it has the name of the stitch along. If it would focus, the name is stitch along, when it was started, how many parts, uh, when each part was released, so on and so forth. Um, I don't have all of them, all the, the things that I finished crossed off yet because I haven't actually gone through to see. I think I only finished January on most of my year long stitch alongs that started in January. Um, Grimm's I know I finished February because I started in March um, earlier in July. Um, and then uh, the Chinese Zodiac and the Yoga Forums are separate and I haven't finished anything on those. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I have my nifty tracker sheet. Um, I also have this um, 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, and the camera probably really won't focus on this. So this is my marathon tracker where I can write down which project I'm working on during which hour. Um, it, it, you'll see it's not filled out and that's because I have not picked which whips I'm gonna work on during which hours. Um, one of the other tools I have is um, the tiny decisions app on my phone um, and I'll show you that here as soon as I find the app again I meant to have it all pulled up okay so I have all of my stitch alongs set up in my tiny decisions app and actually let's go ahead let's see what I'm working on first Okay, it looks like it's Grimm's Fairy Tales. That's convenient. <laughs> I wasn't going to start on that one first just because I've already worked on it some, but, um, focus. Okay. Um, but, uh, Tiny Decisions, you know, has, uh, has made the call. So Grimm's Fairy Tales is what I'll be working on first. And, uh, you heard it here, you heard it first. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm working on first starting Friday morning. So I will spend the first four hours working on Grimm's Fairy Tales, and then I will move on to whatever Tiny Decisions tells me to move on to. So, oh, the last thing, the last tool I'll be using is my Swipe Times um, app. And I think I meant to show this to you all before. So I'm just trying to show it to you. So Swipe Times is a free app that lets you, why did it unfocus? It was focused. Okay. It's a free app uh, that you can get on Android. Um, the other app is on Android as well, where you can input whatever projects you want. And then um, it's as easy as pressing on um, any of those projects and a timer will start. And you can take breaks, you can stop the timer. Also, if you um, stop the timer with less than uh, a minute on, um, yeah, if you stop the timer in less than a minute, it automatically discards it. So like right now when I hit the button, um, it totally discards it. And the fun thing about this is it'll actually tell me how many hours total I've worked on that project, but also how many hours I've worked on today on that project, this week on that project, this year, so on and so forth. I can break it down however I need to. So it makes it super easy to tell how many hours I have, um, I have stitched on one project during the day. And it also will aggregate all the different things that I have timed that day. So I can see how many hours overall I have stitched in a particular day. So this is really nice. I did find out earlier today um, that unless you pay money, you are limited to seven projects. So I actually had to delete some stuff that I had in there for 24 hours of cross stitch the last time so that I could um, put all of my cells in here. But so those are my tools. Those are the things that are going to help me stay organized um, to get things together. And, um, and now I'm going to do a quick whip parade so you can see where I am with everything. Um, but before I do that, we're going to, we're going to, um, say a little, we're going to have a little moment of silence for my stitch along, the one stitch along that I am not continuing, at least not right now. Um, Heike recently, or maybe not recently, in one of her, in one of her floss tubes in the last couple of months, she instituted this, um, this new segment called Rest in Peace. <laughs> 
if you're not if it if that doesn't ring a bell then go check out her floss tubes um it's pretty awesome um she has already retired um her harry potter stitch along um citroen adventure letters from hogwarts um and i am now officially retiring it at least for 2020. i'm not going to go so far as to um, actually remove the stitching yet um, because I, I have enough in it. Let me just pull it out. I have enough in it that I don't really want to, um, to frog it until I really, really decided I'm never going to go back to this. But, um, at the very least, it's going to come out of the Q-snap, the giant Q-snap, and, um, and it will be put away until such a time as I decide that I want to come back to that. So, um, Obviously, if you have been following me for any length of time, you can see that I haven't gotten any further since I started it, I think, in December. So I got the wand finished, I got part of the blue scroll finished, and I have part of the page. And that's as far as I got. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, and I'm going to be real, um, and this is nothing at all against the designer, it's nothing at all against the group, nothing, it's personal taste. Um, but the designs as they're being released just aren't my taste. They, aesthetically, they're not what I prefer. It's not stuff that I would enjoy stitching, and so I haven't stitched it. Um, so um, that's the largest reason that I haven't gotten any more done, because I loved the idea. I love the idea of it, the idea that, you know, there's this stitch along, and then there's pieces that I can decide to personalize for myself, and all of that is built in. I think that's fantastic. I loved the idea of stitching the pages on here and having the different letters uh, and having different stuff going on in those letters. I liked most of the header and everything. I wasn't a fan of the train or the original castle, um, but I love the idea. I just, I haven't liked the, the aesthetics of the rest of the stuff that's been released. So um, ultimately I decided that if I do want to continue this, so that's why I'm not frogging it, I might want to continue it. But if I do continue it, I'm basically going to be redesigning everything myself, um, and I'll be making it into what I would want my letters from Hogwarts to look like, which are not necessarily going to be in the same vein as the the main original pattern. I may use some of the um, some of the ideas of the original pattern, and I may use some of the um, the original or the um, the alternate patterns that have been uploaded to the files of folks who have done different stuff for their own things and shared it with uh, with the group. I might do some of those things. Um, and I also might just come up with some of my own stuff in general. So regardless, uh, we're going to put a great big pin uh, in this particular whip and this particular sow, and uh, we're not going to see it again in 2020. So dun, 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 dun. that was, I, I don't know. Anyway, rest in peace. Harry Potter, Letters from Hogwarts, Citroen Adventure. We're done. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> so, that is that. Um, so, the stitch alongs I'm actually still doing, I'm going to try to do these in order of when I started them. And I have them all in different project bags, so. Bohemia! Love this. So this is Linen and Threads, which is my very first started in 2020 stitch along. And I believe all I have is, all I have finished is January. I really should have laid these out so this wasn't a struggle on camera, but you know how I do. So this is... This is how far I've gotten in linen threads. Eh. Okay, nothing is going to do what I want it to do. Okay. I'm trying to hold it straight. There we go. So, as you might be able to tell, I'm using two different colorways. So the brown and purple, or orangey color, purple and light blue, that is a Threadworks color called Indian Tapestry. And then the purple and blue brighter colorway um, that is a hand dyed cotton floss from Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch. So, as I said, that is only January. <laughs> That's as far as I've gotten. Um, so a lot of catching up to do. And this one I've been stitching in hand. Um, 
which may be part of why it's taking so long. Um, but part of me doesn't want to, to do anything but stitch it in hand at this point. So I guess we'll see this weekend if I decide to keep stitching it in hand or if I decide to, um, to put it on um, a Q-snap. If I'm taking, um, if I'm taking Hogwarts out of the 17 inch Q-snap, I may actually put this one on the 17 inch Q-snap. Um, the only problem is I don't think that 17 inch Q-snap will fit into my um, Elon lap stand in any kind of manageable way. So um, I could set it up, I could put it on an, uh, regardless, I'm not going to sit here and quibble over it while I'm on the camera. I do that so often. Um, regardless, I'll figure out what I'm going to do. I still have all the threads and everything in here. Um, hopefully I have enough threads to do everything. Honestly, at this point, if I can't finish out what I have with the threads that I have, I'll just use something different. I have so much stuff on hand at this point um, that it'll be fine if I, if I end up stitching in a different colorway towards the end. It'll be totally fine. So that's linen threads. And then Animal Almanac was the next one I started. Oh, uh, by the way, the fabric for both of those is actually from Mystic Fabrics. It's 32 count Lugana in both cases. Um, and I believe both of them, one of them is Snurt and one of them is the color that was actually specifically designed for the Stitcher Own Adventure. I can't remember, to be perfectly honest, if I used the Stitcher Own Adventure color for the Stitcher Own Adventure or if I used it for <laughs> Limited Threads. <laughs> one or the other. Um, yeah. Oh gosh, I have. I have thread everywhere. I haven't touched this since February, I think. Um, this one I need to put on a Q-snap or something because stitching it in hand was killing me. So all I have is January. <laughs> um, trying, this is Aurora and I got the thread all over the place anyway. Okay. This is Aurora the Penguin. There we go. So I got January finished and that's it. And there may be, I think there's some back stitching that still needs to be gone on Aurora to be honest. I'll have to look at the pattern. But yeah, I'm not loving how this turned out with, um, with the stitching in hand. I need to stretch this, this over something. I either need to put it in a hoop or I need to put it in a Q-snap, but it's got to go, it's got to go on something. <laughs> Um, and to, to be honest, the way that um, the Chinese Zodiac is working out on a hoop, um, I think I will much more enjoy this fabric if it's stretched out versus trying to stitch it in hand. Linen in hand is kind of awful for me personally. So, um, Animal Omnac. Next is the Peppermint Purple Blackwork Stitch Along, the Year of Blackwork. This is where we are with that. Um, I think we're up to week 30 now. <laughs> so this is uh, 5, 9, 10, 11. So I'm roughly halfway to where I need to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, and I think I actually, I probably need to buy some more threads for this. Um, because I think I only bought the first half of the year. So we'll see how far I can get with that. And that's the Peppermint Purple Blackwork SAL. And then, and then, oh, Grimm's Fairy Tales was the next one. And you all have seen my progress on this. I haven't stitched anything more on it since I showed it to you last. So um, this is my, um, this is my farthest along, year-long stitch along. So I've got um, the first pattern, which is um, the Musicians of Bremen, and then I've got uh, the Frog and the Princess, which was the second month. That was February, and then March is Hansel and Gretel. So I will more than likely finish Hansel and Gretel. Um, hopefully I'll get into uh, whatever was um, in April. I don't remember off the top of my head what the next pattern was. So that is, um, uh, that is Grimm's Fairy Tales. 
and then and then we have the frosted pumpkin stitchery chinese zodiac stitch along this one is an eight month stitch along that started in april um, so the patterns for this come out on the 15th so we do have april may june and july because we're already past july 15th um, so april may june july so i have four months um, that need to be caught up on. <laughs> I have most of April, um, so I have almost one and a half animals, but this is the big part of April was this um, center design. So I've got um, another, I think that the tiger is after the ox, so we've got the rat, the ox, and the tiger for the first pattern, and then there's three more patterns. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> the, the patterns are pretty intricate for this so far. Um, Heike has been on top of this like white on rice man. Um, she's, she's just zipping right through it. Um, I find it not that fast personally. <laughs> but that is the Chinese Zodiac. And last but not least, this is not a year long stitch along, but this is a stitch along. Um, and we just started this at the end of May. You may recall, this was one of my mania starts, um, and this is yoga corns. <laughs> and I have not touched this since mania, <laughs> um, because I had to frog a significant portion of it and I was mad. Um, so it doesn't look like anything yet. But yeah, that will, that will be yoga corns. So this one, um, of course, I'm going to sit here and say, conceivably, I could finish this. Um, no, I, I might finish. I should be able to finish at least one unicorn. I will, I will state that. But there's three unicorns in the pattern, and I'm pretty sure four hours is not going to get me three unicorns. Four hours might get me to finish this one, um, maybe at least up to the point where the back stitching goes in. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this is probably going to, this is going to go on a Q-snap. Um, I had it on a 14 by 14 because uh, I had taken an 11 by 11 and put it um, and put extenders on it. Um, but that was too big for the Elon um, and it was really uncomfortable. So I'll probably put it on the 11 by 11 um, or I might even do an 8 by 14 um, because the pattern is long this way, but it's really short this way. So if I put it on an 8 by 14, it should be enough space to get the entire unicorn vertically. Um, but the 14 will let me get all of the length of it, so I won't have to roll it over, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, so that is it. So that's all six stitch alongs. I plan on working on each and every one of those over the course of this weekend. Um, as I said, I'll be starting on Grimm's because the uh, Tiny Decisions wheel has spoken. Um, so that is that. That's my plan. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I am hoping that some of you all are participating in 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. And if you are, I would love to hear what your goals are, what your plans are, what your hopes are um, to accomplish for the weekend. Um, and I think I will try to do what I tried to do last time, which is to do some um, random updates during the day and then I'll drop them all together, um, edit them all together and post it as a, um, a post 24 hours of cross stitch redux. So hopefully that will happen. Um, I also, um, I'll go ahead and throw this in too. Uh, July 25th, Saturday, um, is the day that, um, ugh, I'm not gonna be able to say it right. So there's this like day in the life thing that's happening with YouTube and with Ridley Scott and they, um, they're they trying to get folks to just record whatever they're doing on January or January, July 25th um, and just, um, you know, anything that you do, whatever that is, whether it's just you wandering around your house and doing cross stitch, which is what I will be doing, <laughs> or if you're going out and working or you're, whatever you're doing, they want you to film it. They want you to put it on film and then send it to them at the end of the day um, so that they can put it all together in one film. Ridley Scott's going to edit it all together and you may or may not show up in it, but you might. So um, I'm thinking I will probably send some footage to that as well. Um, I'm not sure if you will specifically see that footage or not. Um, there are a couple of things I'm trying to do that I would like to share with you. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But um, if that's something that you're interested in or that you might uh, want to do, 
you can always film it and if you don't feel comfortable with it you don't want to share it you don't have to but why not why not why not just record what you're doing during the day and and just see maybe it'll be something that that others would find interesting so um, I'll try to put um, I'll try to remember to add the link to the link haven about how to get involved with that and the requirements um, and um, the other things that they're asking for with that it's not a lot uh, the main thing is if you're going to have anybody other than yourself in it you need to get them to sign a release and there's like four questions that they would like you to answer during the course of your video so um, that sounds like it'll be really cool and since I'll be filming stuff anyway on Saturday for 24 hours of cross stitch I thought that would be kind of fun so um, let's see I think that's it um, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put in the uh, the drawing for the two folks that are gonna get those floss buddies um, the uh, bendy flip floss buddies hello stitchy people it is time for our bags plus pay it forward um, thank you gift selection um, so I'm just using a comment picker here um, for YouTube comments and as you see I've already got the URL in here I've got animals which is the first one I'm going to pick um, and there are four of you who commented that you love cute animals so this is for the woodland creatures bags plus bendy flip uh, the 12 pocket floss buddy um, so I'm just gonna go down here and pick a winner let's see who it is Rebecca McClellan. That's awesome. So um, as you can see, she loves cute animals. Just wanted to ask what the difference was between uh, Jobelin and Lugana. Um, so I explained that in a little bit more detail earlier in the video. So I hope that was helpful to everybody. Um, so uh, Rebecca, congratulations. You get the Woodland Creatures Floss Buddy. Um, I might still have your email address because um, I think we've communicated before, but make sure you fill out that happy mail form um, so that I can make sure I have the, the correct address for you. So then let's go up here and pick another winner. And we're just going to put in giraffes here. As long as I can spell it correctly. <laughs> okay. A few of you commented that you uh, love giraffes. So let's see who gets that bendy flip. And it is Tea Time Fix. So pretty. I love giraffes. The FO is cute. I like the earth yarn. So beautiful. So Tea Time Fix, make sure you fill out that happy mail form uh, in the description here, and I'll be happy to send out that bendy flip to you. So congratulations, Rebecca. Congratulations, Tea Time Fix. I'm so excited to be able to share these with you. Yay, whoever won. <laughs> I don't know at the time of filming, uh, but you will know now and congratulations. You're awesome. I can't wait to send this to you. Make sure that you fill out the, uh, the happy mail form so that I can send you uh, your floss buddy. Um, and I did not say um, domestic only. So if you're international, I will, I will get that to you as well. Make sure, just make sure that you send me your information. If I don't get your information, let's say, um, by a week from the time that I post this video that it goes live um, then I will draw another name and I will send it to somebody else so make sure you get on that happy mail form um, okay folks well I guess I will cut this off now I guess it really wasn't that much shorter than a regular video <laughs> it's all good but I hope you're well I hope you're you're staying healthy and I hope you're staying safe and I hope you just keep stitching as well till I see you next time have a great one